Do you need a tail that stays upright? Want one that's freestanding? Then join me on this two-part adventure into how I made my tail, starting with the base. What you'll need. Aluminium strip. I used here a 1cm wide with a 3mm thickness that came in a 3m length. A hacksaw, pliers, wood. I used a pine board which was 9cm wide with an 8mm thickness. A marker, a dremel, screws. I actually swapped these out for some quarter inch by 18mm bolts and nuts. Screwdriver, wire, wire snips, E6000 glue, 2.5 to 3 meters of cotton belting, two buckles, foam, also a drill and drill bits. And just FYI, I also used some rulers, a measuring tape, a sewing machine, scissors, a box knife, a hot glue gun and some plastic clamps, which I haven't shown here. Let's begin. I started with a wood base. First, I measured out 13 centimeters and cut it using my hacksaw. Then I measured out two centimeters from each point all around the sides then connected them up. I repeated this on the back. Then I got out my Dremel, along with the cutting and sanding heads. Securing the cutting head into position, I went to work cutting along the line. Then I replaced the cutting head with the sanding head and sanded the edges into a curve. And I repeated this process for the three other points. Next, I marked out my aluminium piece. I measured 145 centimeters and made a mark. Then I grabbed my hacksaw and cut along the line. Off camera, of course. Then I had my two aluminium pieces, one at 145 centimeters and one at 155 centimeters. I started with the horizontal support of the tail first. Taking the 145 centimeter cut length, I marked the midway point. Then I went ahead and bent it at that point. Next, I marked five centimeters away from the edge and with some help from the pliers, I bent the metal to create some little feet. In hindsight, I should have done this after the holes were drilled. Then using some brute force, of which I have little but managed well enough, I curved the sides up. That's when I drilled the holes with a great amount of difficulty, but I got there in the end. On to the vertical supports, having learnt some lessons. The first thing I did was mark the bend points to create the feet or four centimeters on either side of the vertical support, as opposed to doing five centimeters for the horizontal support. However, just like my horizontal support, I marked the bolt placement to be two and a half centimeters and half a centimeter from the edge. I'll also point out at this point that the drill bits I used were three and a half millimeters to get the holes started, and then I used a six and a half millimeter drill bit to create the holes. After the holes were formed, I used pliers to bend the mark points to create the feet. Grabbing the wood base, I marked up the central line. Using my freshly drilled aluminium piece, I marked up where the holes needed to be made and then drilled them on the top. Then I did a quick tester with the bolts to make sure that it all fit. I will say at this point, I used my screwdriver and pliers to make everything really secure. Now that I was happy with how everything was turning out, I marked out the last bottom holes, drilled the holes into the wood and pieced it all together. Now it's time for some brute force shaping, which, forgive me, I did off camera as it was difficult with my seriously lousy upper body strength. To help with keeping the point of the tail, I cut some wire. I used that wire to wrap around the points where the horizontal and the vertical supports met. I used my pliers to bend the last bit into place. Then I noticed something I had not anticipated. The aluminium was showing stress fractures near the bolts. Whoops! Oh well, I guess it's time for E6000. I spread a healthy dosage of E6000 over all the connecting metal and wood pieces. I believe that E6000 solves so many problems because it's actually made from the tears of cosplayers. I tried not to beat myself up about this because at the end of the day, I'm predominantly a sewer. This is all new territory for me. So my tail wasn't coming part again. Oh well, at least now it's super sturdy. Now, onto the straps. Yes! Something I at least feel a little bit comfortable with. I measured out 150 centimeters and cut the belting. Then I sewed one end down after I looped it through the catching side of the buckle. Using my trusty E6000 again, I glued the straps down with the buckle just off to the side. 
This will keep the buckles from being seen too much when the towel is being worn. As a side note, I glued the slightly longer strap to the bottom. Once the glue is dry, I did a quick fit, cut the belting to a more desired length, inserted the other side of the buckle and hemmed up the end. Onto the foam cushioning. I did this as the flat wood was quite uncomfortable and I wanted a little lift from the bottom. I traced out the base three times before I put on the straps. Using a box knife, I cut out two of the shapes and then trimmed them down with scissors. I then took one of the cutouts and cut it in half. Using a hot glue gun, I glued the two halves together and then mounted those onto the full foam piece. After that dried, I used my sanding head in my Dremel to make the three pieces a bit smoother together, even sanding in a bit of an incline. Then I used the Tears of Cosplays again to attach the foam to the back of the wooden base and secured it with some clamps. And then I let it all dry overnight. And the base of the tail was done. Stay tuned for part two, which is all about covering the tail with fur. If you have any questions, feel free to fire them my way.